and welcome to RTF Sports Talk. I am Michael Buckeister on the Twitter machine at mbuck41. Welcome to today's show, guys. Uh, sorry about yesterday. We had a little hiccup. Uh, my fault. Um, I'm a loser, I guess, or something. I don't know, but it is what it is. But joined, as always, with my man, Marcus the Freak. Marcus, how you doing today, buddy? How you doing? Pretty good, Michael. Yeah, missed yesterday, but we're back on strong today. Yeah, absolutely. I'm doing good. Had a good day so far. Yeah, I mean, you should be sk- skating sky high. You were Texas Longhorns won the NIT last night. <laughs> yeah, how, yeah, they, 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 they did okay. How is the vibe around the Texas Longhorn community? Are you guys pretty hyped about it, or are you kind of like, yeah, it's just a win? Um, A little bit of both. I mean, they salvaged the season, I guess you could say, um, by winning the NIT championship. I mean, they could have just uh, folded and went home and uh, had a 16-16 and 16 record, but they were able to win five games get to 21 and 16 and it helps for next season it's it's uh springs them in the next season i think it was a good thing now would i have rather made the ncaa tournament and got to the elite eight or something like that sure absolutely 100%. But winning the nit is a pretty good consolation prize it's not bad like i said they salvaged the season well uh speaking of next of next season uh like i like i wasn't going to c- c- go here but but you kind of you kind of perked, perked my interest for next season. The and the uh, the Big Twelve and Big East released their schedules. Uh, and it, like like apparently it's a Big East Big Twelve uh, challenge next year. It looks like okay. your it, it uh, looks like your your uh, Texas Longhorns playing Providence. Uh, you know you, what? I saw you that? posted that. Yeah. I saw you posted that somewhere. I haven't even had a chance to take a look at it. Um, that that ought to be that ought to be exciting. Big Twelve versus Big East. Um, well, 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 why don't we just run through the games here real quick? Like we have Marquette versus Kansas State, uh, Kansas versus Vill- versus Villanova. That's a kind of a, in, like a very intriguing game there. That is uh, Oklahoma, Creighton, Texas, Providence, Butler, Baylor, uh, Georgetown, Oklahoma State, Seton Hall, Iowa State, Texas Tech versus DePaul, West Virginia versus St. John's, and Xavier versus TCU. Those are all intriguing matchups. Those are all really good programs. I can't think of a terrible program you just mentioned. I mean, there may be some of those programs are um, average right now, or a little bit above average, but right. everybody you just mentioned, um, those are going to be some really intriguing games next year. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. All those teams are going to have a shot. Every team you just mentioned will have a shot at making the NCAA tournament easily. Yeah. And uh, actually, my dad asked me, like, like, hey, like, how do you think the like our conference, the Big 12 conference, is going to fare? I'm like, eight and two. You think? Wow, eight and two. Okay. I, 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 so I think the only losses are are going to come from Kansas and Kansas State. Okay. Well, eight and two is pretty. You shooting for the stars there a little bit, but hey, I'll take eight and two. That sounds good to me. I mean, and really the really the I think the only game that really scares me is is I don't know much about St. John's. I very rarely see see them on ESPN ever anymore, uh, and that. Uh, and that Georgetown team, I think they're coached by uh, Patrick Ewing, if I'm not mistaken. Or is it Seton Hall is coached by? No, yeah, George, yeah, Georgetown uh, was. Yeah, Georgetown. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, Georgetown's coached by uh, Patrick Ewing. But yeah, I mean, it's it's so early to even look at those things. But yeah, yeah. I mean, eight, the, the, eight the season's two, not even over two, yet. <laughs> yeah, eight and two, you're shooting for the stars there. I, I mean, yeah, St. John's guy has a really good history. Louis, Louis Carnesecca. Yeah, um, their old coach. I mean, the key that's words it. their history though. They have, they have a great. Yeah, history. they have a, a unbelievable history there. Yeah. Chris Mullen. Yeah, Mark Jackson. I mean, yeah. Well, I mean, we're, we're already looking for the 2020 season, and the 2019 <laughs> season is not even over, like over yet. The final four <laughs> starts tomorrow. You yes. have, you have uh, what Michigan State versus Texas Tech, and then you have uh, uh, Auburn versus. Uh, 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 shoot, it's Virginia, yeah. Virginia, drawing a blank. My, 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 my fault. Uh, but it, it it does start Saturday afternoon here. Uh, first of all, who do you think is going to uh, su- surprise you the most out of these two games? Like, who is your player to watch? Wow, I mean, that's a really good question. There are a bunch of players to watch. I mean, Jared Culver from Texas Tech. Um, is going to be a lottery pick. I mean, that's he's right outside that R.J. Barrett, Zion Williamson, uh, John Morant right there in that in that category. Um, He's only averaging like 21 points a game in the tournament. So he hasn't like really gone off and had this unbelievable game yet. That possibly could happen. Um, 
I don't think it'll happen because the defense Michigan State employs will probably will will not allow that to happen. But Jared Culver is a talent to watch. He reminds me a little bit of Demar Derozan. Um, maybe not has the handle like Demar Derozan, but uh, he's right there and and like a Demar Derozan. And Demar went like number nine overall in the 2009 draft. They're very they're very very similar. Okay, but uh, so Jared Culver could go off. Cassius Winston's a good, steady, heady player. Um, like a, he, ra- he reminds me of a, a short Dennis Johnson. He controls the game. Um, that's a that's a good candidate to be Final Four MVP. That's you got a great Jarrett pick Culver, right there. Yep. Uh, uh, and uh, Jarrett Culver, and then you have Jarrett um, Harper from Auburn, little five eleven dynamo. There, he could be your Final Four MVP. He has got uh, a wealth of speed. He knows how to run the team. He hits threes. He gets to the rim. He puts so much pressure on your defense. And so, yeah, I wouldn't rule out Diakite either from Virginia. Um, that's another one. DeAndre Hunter from Virginia as well. He, DeAndre Hunter also um, is, is in that lottery range. He's not up there with Jarrett Culver and Zion and him. But DeAndre Hunter's right out, right in that top 10, uh, like maybe 10 to 14 range is going to go in the draft. They compare him to Kawhi Leonard a little bit. Mm-hmm. I don't think he has the athleticism that Kawhi Leonard has, DeAndre Hunter that is. But uh, DeAndre Hunter's a pretty good defender. Um, and he can score the basketball. So each team has a players that could you know, easily see winning like the Final Four MVP. That's This is going to be fun to watch. Yeah, uh, I hear everything you're saying. And I like your pick from pick from Auburn. I've seen those guys play four times now this, like this season. And Auburn's a very, very good team. Uh, but I think you told me the wrong guy on Auburn. You have to look at Bryce Brown from Auburn. This yeah, kid, he is a... Uh, Three point shooting monster, and uh, and and uh, I've seen him go off versus Kentucky. I think it was the first time they like they like they like they played actually. Um, Kentucky was up on Auburn by almost twenty points, and Bryce Brown hit seven threes in the second half to bring them uh, to the point of almost winning the game. They only lost by uh, two points in that game. Uh, he is a very very. Um, He's a volume shooter, so yeah. like, so like you, so like you may not see him go off in the first half. He he might even have zero points for uh, like on I don't know seven shots. Uh, but in the second half, you you best watch out because yeah, you know, he can, uh, hey, he can go off at any time. Michael, I'm right there with you. I mean, Brown can shoot the lights out of the ball. This Auburn team looks like a team of destiny. They look like they're a team on a mission. Um, last year they won the SEC uh, conference tournament and then they failed in the second round to um, I believe it was uh, Clemson. Yeah. And um, since then Bruce Pearl's got those kids on a mission. You, you talk about Purifoy, uh, Mclemore, Dowdy, and they're doing it without um, um, what's called Okiki. Yep. And you wonder when that's going to come back and hurt them. You know, being without Okiki, who's also going to be in the NBA one day. Um, but it doesn't look like it's hurt them so far. Because this guy, um, what do you call uh, Anthony McLemore, has been absolutely fabulous, and I think McLemore is the one that uh, blocked PJ Washington in Kentucky a couple times and was challenging challenging PJ Washington at the rim. McLemore, that is, and Auburn just looks really good. They look like they're on a team a team on a mission, a destiny. Um, so any one of those guys, I just think the guy that makes it everything go is little Jared Harper, and so right, I look yeah. for Auburn uh, to. Make some noise. These games are going to be really, really competitive. I, I don't see a blowout in any of these games. There's absolutely no way because the defense is going to be too good to allow any blowouts. Yeah. No team's going to go on some 15-0 run here. Yeah, and uh, and I'm glad you brought the uh, the Oka the Oka Kiki guy. I don't remember him against any like I don't remember him being a standout at any of the Kentucky games that I watched them play. But, yeah. uh, but it seemed like every other game, like he played, he must've stepped up and been the man. Cause I think he was averaging 16 points a game. If like, if I'm not mistaken in the regular season, uh, in the tournament, like he was doing good, he was doing good things too. So I, I kind of feel like, so I saw an interview on Bruce Pearl. Like, like he's like, Hey, we had to learn how to play, lie a lock without Okiki on the like on the fly because he got hurt on a Friday and they had to play on Sunday so 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 they had one day to prepare now but now they've gotten a whole week to to prepare so definitely look like uh, like like just like you keep saying Auburn looks like a team on a mission on a destiny think about this 
Auburn has had to play three blue blood teams. They beat Kansas, they beat North Carolina, and they beat Kentucky. Like, <laughs> yeah. like, and like, what other like what other team do you want them to beat? To be like, hey, this team you got you got to watch out. I mean the I mean the only thing that 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 would have made their tournament even more successful beating duke in the championship i mean yeah <laughs> beat, like they, yeah. they they beat kansas north carolina kentucky and duke all in route to a championship all four blood blood schools like come like come on yeah, yeah. that'd be crazy and here's your yeah here's your consolation prize go beat go beat virginia and coach bennett i mean yeah. that's gonna be hard to do as well oh, i mean yeah, yeah if, if auburn wins this final four you talk about earning it michael you just mentioned it um virginia's an excellent ball team and uh, basketball team and they're a team of redemption as well. Virginia, that is. You lose last year to UMBC, a 16 beating a 1. They were the mock, the the one mock seed that of the lost. college for how long? I mean, yeah, yeah. that's never happened before. You, you're a complete embarrassment to your school. And then for them to come back and then make it to the Final Four, that is a good redemption story. I know there's not that many re- good stories in the Final Four. Like, you know, there's no uh, Loyola Chicago or anything like that going on. But Virginia, that's a re- even though they're the number one seed – to come back from losing from a, a 16 beating a one last year, that is a big deal. And then not only that, Michael, uh, the first round of Virginia was down to what? Greensboro? Yeah. UNC Greensboro. They were down like 14 one time in the first half. And you're like, uh-oh, here it goes again. <laughs> and once once they got by Greensboro, um, they've been playing well. And I know it took a last-second shot by Diakiti, but Virginia's a, a story of redemption. And, you know, Auburn's the, the – looks like they're going to be a good story as well. Uh, team of destiny, but Virginia. Nobody's talking about this story of rede- redem- uh, redemption for Virginia, and it's it's right there. Um, the fact that they're in the Final Four, you got to give them a lot of credit. You got to give Coach Bennett a lot of credit, and they and they're pretty smooth cu- uh, customers. Man, when they play, they're one of the few teams that you know. Look, you know, you look in college basketball, teams panic when the shot clock goes down, like yep. it's in scramble mode. Well, Virginia feels comfortable when the shot clock gets to ten seconds. That's their game. That's where they're going to beat you. The ball movement, you're scrambling around. Matter of fact, the defense is scrambling around more than the offense. Yeah. They're, they look comfortable within the last 10 seconds of a shot clock. And the guy that's got to come through for them, not only DeAndre Hunter, we talked about Diakiti, is uh, Kyle Guy. He's been on a little bit of a slump to the last game. And, uh, you know, guy, Guy's got to, got to hit some shots for Virginia to win the game. But uh, Virginia, they spread you out real well on offense and – they play good, strong defense. This Final Four, to me, is great. It's must-see TV, in my opinion. And I don't think you're going to get a score over 80. These All these teams that are left now, well, they get after your butt defensively. There's going to be no team. There's no score that's going to be 85 to 88. I guarantee it. The only way that will happen is if Auburn just goes crazy versus, right. versus Virginia. Because uh, when Virginia played, uh, who was their last game that they played against? Uh, Purdue. Purdue. Uh, yeah, the, the, like Purdue kind of went off a went off a like a like a tad bit, and Virginia kind of played a hurry up mode, and you saw their offensive skill actually. I, I believe the final score was what eighty nine to eighty eight or something like. Yeah, did it, and it went it went in overtime too for right. that as well. Right, but they, yep. yeah, Purdue had one guy go off. He had Carson Edwards, but yeah, yeah right. And uh, let me flash back there to uh, UNC Greensboro, like a like a like a like a tad bit. We I do another podcast called Big Big Blue Breakdown with my man Matthew Lyle. Shout out, bud. Hope uh, hope everything's doing well for him. Uh, he's he's having a miracle happen in his life right now. It's a very good <laughs> time for him. Uh, but he, uh, he personally, like I like 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 like, like I want to give give him every like every prop. Uh, that there is and he said unc greensboro when we play when they played kentucky earlier in this year like hey guys do not sleep on this team they're a very very good team they're going to be in the ncaa tournament they're and they're going to make and they're going to make 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 some noise they're a very very old veteran team the i think it was the youngest player on the team is 22 years old so like i said on wednesday when you have a bunch of 23 20 24 year olds playing against 17 8 8 18 year old old kids it you know that that kind of wears you out and i think that's what unc greensboro did did against Vir, Vir, virginia like in that game um no oh, your boy kyle was right on the money then because yeah greensboro gave virginia in that first round everything they could handle yeah uh, th- they gave kentucky everything they handled yes it was earlier in this like earlier in the season 
that's when the fan base is all these these guys are are nothing but an NIT team. Like I, I like I like I like I actually want to get into fan bases a little bit. Like maybe uh, once everything slows down, like a just like a tab bit, like the best and worst fan fan bases. But okay. I think the Kentucky fan fan base, man, they are so up and down. They are like a bipolar woman, man. It's just like you do one thing wrong, oh you suck, you're horrible. This this and this, <laughs> and then and then you go and you destroy it. North Carolina by twenty. Oh, we're a championship team. <laughs> One side of the other <laughs> coin or the other. Calm down, boys. Uh, yeah. But yeah. Um, be, be, before we get into the picks, like, I like, I feel like, I mean, like, the, there are teams that you strongly dislike. Maybe you, you can say, "Hey, my, my my team that I hate is KU because I'm a Kansas State fan." You know, at like like at heart, I'm a K State alum. I played football up there, and I I hate the Jayhawks. Like I like I don't care if they're in my conference or lie, lie or not. I hate them 100. percent I want them to lose by 20 every time they step on the court. But looking at this final four, I don't, I, I don't have a team that I hate. Like I kind of I kind of see, see myself secretly rooting for everybody. You know, like right. I, I, I I mean like if Virginia were to win, they're on the that they're on the redemption tour like you were talking about if auburn wins they're on a destiny tour if texas tech wins you know this is their first final final four why not win the championship and and michigan state you know they they had that scandal that came out last year or two or two or two yeah. two 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 years years ago that, that this would be great rebirth of the pro Pro program. Tom Izzo is a his like his like historical coach. So I mean, there is nobody you can really hate. Like I don't think in the final, final four. Yeah, to Izzo had to answer some tough questions on that on the on, on that what you were talking about. Yeah, that was tough for that program. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I mean, l- let's just let's just jump in. Just jump into it here. Uh, who do you got winning that first matchup? Listen, I I think it's the night game first, the one I'll go first. Um, Texas Tech versus Michigan State. This is going to be unbelievable. Um, and it's not going to be – when I say unbelievable, it's for the true b- basketball people here because first one to 40 will win this game. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I agree. The defense, the defense is going to be that good. I mean, Texas Tech gets after your butt. Um, I think what did we talk about the other day? Mark View Gonzaga said Texas Tech is very handsy. They put their hands on you. They challenge the shooters very well. I mean, I'm five ten and a half, and I can shoot the ball pretty well. I'd be worried on that perimeter. I'm gonna get my shot blocked. <laughs> and 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 even if I was six five, I'd be worried on the perimeter getting my shot blocked. Did you see Tariq Owens' uh, last game for Texas Tech block uh, Hachimura from uh, from Gonzaga? It's, he was six eight. I did he not. blocked his three point shot at the end of the game. I mean, Tariq, Tariq Owens is six ten, has long arms. Um, you can't breathe with Texas Tech. I mean, they're that good defensively. I, I when I knew, I always knew they were good defensively. Hell, I watched the Big Twelve. Oh, yeah. But then when they played Buffalo in the NCAA tournament, Buffalo University of Buffalo went through a stretch. They were 0 for 18. I mean, think about that for a second. Buffalo went 0 for 18 versus Texas Tech's defense in a in a in a stretch of the game. Uh, Texas Tech's unbelievable defensively. I I think Texas Tech will shock Michigan State here. Um, I love Izzo and the boys, but I maybe they'll run a box and one on Cash and Win- Cassius Winston, but I don't think they'll even do that. They play that good, heady defense. Mooney and Moretti are pretty good. They know where to be, and Mooney and Moretti hit big-time shots. If Cobra gets going, look out. Owens is in the middle. I tell you what, I'm going to take Texas Tech beating Michigan State 60 to 55. That'd be the, that that that's that's the uh, one of my that's my prediction. And that 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 game's actually the nightcap. Yeah, the first and- game. Good. Yeah, Auburn and Virginia actually the first game out on Saturday. Um, this is another one, first one to forty wins. Now, Michael, I'm gonna piggyback off what you said. You're exactly right. Auburn likes to run, so this is a contrasting of styles here. The only way somebody gets to eighty points is if Auburn finds the Virginia weakness and gets up and down the court, and Virginia's not hitting the ball. Uh, excuse me, shooting the ball very well. And Virginia hates playing against three point shooting teams, and this is exactly what Auburn is. Um, the only way to, to to get Virginia out of the game, you start bombing threes on their butt, and uh, they get a little bit rattled defensively. Then Auburn runs that fast break, and they want to run. Sometimes they run for layups, but most of the time they want to run to the three-point line. Um, I'll tell you what, I'm going to take – man, 
and this it's a big loss with Okiki, but you wonder when that's going to come back to bite them, but it's not going to come back to bite them on Saturday. I'm going to take Auburn beating Virginia um, kind of around the similar score here. We're talking 66-63. I think these are going to be games that come down to the wire. It will be interesting to me to see Jared Harper, the point guard, if he starts going off and, and getting people involved and, and Virginia can't handle him, um, Clark, the freshman, can't handle uh, Harper, it'd be interesting to see if – Virginia and Coach Bennett does what um, Greg Popovich used to do with Bruce Bowen. He would put out a fire. So you put DeAndre Hunter at 6'7 on Jared Harper and say, okay, look, we're not going to let you, uh, Jared Harper, we're not going to let you run around all day. We're going to put our best defender, DeAndre Hunter, on you, see if we can put out that fire and and try to nullify Harper some kind of way. But other, And that will be interesting to see if Bennett does that move maybe in the last five minutes of a game. That's where I think that he might he would do that move. But uh, other than that, no, I, I got Auburn winning this game in another close game. So I got Auburn and Texas Tech Monday night. And uh, uh, I, I, I'm going to start right there on the on the Auburn game that that you were just talking about. Um, I I do think you're right on that. I don't think Virginia likes likes to run, but we saw against Purdue that they can run and they can be successful uh, successful about it. I believe at one point versus Purdue, they were down by 12 points, uh, and and like they didn't they they didn't panic. They picked up the pace a little bit. They hit a couple big threes, and within 45 seconds, it was a, like it was like it was a, it was like it was a tied it was a tied game again. It was so. I, I think Virginia is a is a chameleon. They can adapt to any type of style of like of play that you need them to play with. It's like if Auburn is going to play high speed. You know, Virginia will will work that shot clock, but they can also get up and down the court too. Uh, they're a very, very well coached. They're a very, very well coached team. They're a very, very fundamentally sound team as well. Uh, yeah. So they, and I don't know how many seniors they like they have, but they seem to have that veteran mind, that veteran mind, mind mindset too. And I think a lot of that comes from playing. In the ACC, uh, yes, I like I like I do think the ACC is not the best conference, but they have very very strong competition head to toe. So, I mean, like think about this: they played Duke twice, they played North Carolina twice. You know, some they, good coaches. Yeah, uh, they uh, they played Florida uh, F- Florida State. You know, uh, so I mean, they've they've had early season competition where teams like to get up and down the court. And uh, so this is this isn't going to be anything new for for them. But everything that I said, throw that out the window because I think Auburn is going to win this game. I think Bryce Brown is he he is going to have a thirty point game. He is going to put the team on the back, and and uh, and I do think it's going to be the first team to forty that like like just like wins two. But don't be surprised if it's a. 45 40 game with six minutes left and then at the end of the game it's a 70 point point game i think Perfect. most of the scoring is going to come in the last 10 minutes of like of that game and yeah. it's going to catapult auburn uh and just give them the momentum in, into that championship game so and, and and like in uh looking at espn here uh they are giving virginia 80 percent chance to beat auburn uh that's a I, lot wow with, yeah with a uh with the six point spread as spread as well, so mm. uh, me and you are in the boat here of picking the underdog, like yeah. and like like in that one too. Uh, t- transitioning over to the Michigan State Texas Tech game, the ESPN is is a giving uh, Michigan State a sixty two percent chance to, to 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 like win. It's a little bit more feasible, I guess, and it's only a three it's only a three a three point spread. Uh, so. Uh, I look for Culver to have a good game versus Michigan State. I I uh uh I think he's due for one of those just explosive I'm going to do whatever I want games. Uh yeah. you know, like I think he's averaged about 20 points a game yeah. throughout the season and uh mm-hmm. when you only score 45 points and a lot like in a game for Texas Tech like they've been pretty much like all like all season 50 to 55 points tops. You know, you're like you're scoring a third, a third of your team's points. I don't think Michigan State is going to be able to stop them. To be honest, uh, this one I think is I think is going to be the same exact way. It is going to be an ugly first, 
uh, 30 minute game. It's <laughs> do not be surprised. Like if halftime scores 29 to 24, you know, right. uh, just in favor of Michigan state, I think Michigan state is going to go into halftime leading that game. Then Culver second half for Texas tech, he shoots lights out. Uh, and you know, they pull out to a 10 point lead and end up winning the game by a seven. I think, I think this game will be very, very one-sided, I think Texas Tech is just going to go up there. Their defense is going to smother Michigan State. Michigan State hasn't seen a defense like this all season. They haven't. And uh, they're yeah. they're going to be hell shocked, and it's just going to wear wear them out in the end. I will I will guarantee you if you were watching the Michigan Texas Tech game with Tom Izzo, he was probably freaking out. Mm-hmm. Texas Tech made Michigan look like a Harry High School team. It, it, it was it was amazing to watch. Michigan looked like they couldn't even play basketball playing against Texas Tech's defense. I was amazed. If Texas Tech applies that same pressure, same defense, Michigan State's in for a tough time. I know Izzo is worried right now. I know that for a fact. There's no way. Everybody's singing his praises. Oh, Izzo, he's great, he's great. And he is great. He's he hasn't great. seen anything like Texas Tech. And he. I know Izzo's worried right now. He's been, probably been up all every night <laughs> trying to study this Texas Tech defense. And the funny thing about – so. Just go back to my picks real quick. I'm picking Texas Tech and Auburn, I guess the two underdogs, according to ESPN, where ESPN would, would be right. I'm just giving this. If if this was a seven-game series in the NBA, I might pick Michigan State 4-3 in a seven-game series. I might pick Virginia to beat Auburn in a seven-game series like in a game seven. Right. But this is not that. This is far from that. This is a one-and-done setting on a neutral field, neutral court, and that's why I'm going to take Texas Tech and Auburn. Yeah, and uh... – I have to uh, a I have to agree with you as like like as well on that uh, since it is the since it is a one game setting here uh, I don't think the uh, I mean like even if it was a three game series I think I would flip flop my picks because Virginia and Michigan State are that good and then yeah. they will be able to adjust on that on that t- 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 day off in game two and right. game and and like game three will be totally opposite what we see in game one but the one game settings i have to agree uh any anything can happen so and then i think we both agree on none of them. there's going to be no blowouts here no no, like, no, no i don't no. see any team getting ahead of somebody by 15 i just don't see it yeah i mean i think the largest point spread we will see is a 10 point in the texas tech michigan state game just because mm. you know there are always runs in college bat 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 bat, bat basketball there's always a 7-0 run there's always a 10-0 run always yeah. like it never fails right but, but i th- i think it's i think that run is going to be michigan state because when they come out in the second half because they'll still be fresh they'll be like oh we're just fresh out of the like locker room they hit a couple big shots and then boom it's a it's a 7 run it might be a it might be a 12 point game Texas Tech finds their grooves and it's and it's then it's 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 game over. Uh, you probably won't see Michigan State score for about an eight minute stretch, maybe a nine minute stretch. Yeah. Uh, so, so we both have the same championship game. We have Texas Tech versus Auburn. Who do you got in that? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm gonna go and 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 I can't believe I'm gonna say this. I did actually. My only Final Four team left is Auburn. I had Auburn in the championship game versus Gonzaga. Okay, but I yeah. See, I, I so see you. you know, if I didn't watch any of the games, I'd pick Auburn. You know, if my you know because I actually had them in the championship game. But I think this is where finally Okiki not having him, his presence in the on the inside and his, all his all around effect on the game. I think it will finally catch up to. Auburn in the championship game, and I think Texas Tech's defense is too much. I think Mooney and Moretti, uh, they're dead-eye shooters from the outside. Tariq Owens is roaming that paint, like I mentioned early, earlier. And Culver's due for a big game. It could come Saturday. It could come Monday. Hell, it could come in both games because um, he's that type of player. Like I said, yep. he reminds me of DeMar DeRozan. Um, I, I picked Texas Tech in this one-game scenario to win the championship in this Final Four. They've showed me too much. Their defense on Buffalo, their defense on Michigan um, has been too strong. I, I've been completely uh, impressed. They've evolved as a team all throughout the year. I was even down on them in the Big 12 tournament because they bowed out early. But they have been on an absolute mission, and I think that mission will continue. I think they'll cut down the nets Monday night beating Auburn. Um, 
and that's going to be a, a fascinating basketball game. Yeah, uh, Auburn had a early exit too in the SEC tournament, but yeah. I think if but I think if both of these teams would have made it say to the conference championship, they wouldn't be here. They would be tired. They would be wore yeah. out. To would we'll be honest, so so right, sometimes that's a blessing in disguise yeah, to go out early, it, it, like like <laughs> just like is like exactly there. So you're picking Texas Tech. I'm going to go on the other side of the coin. Coin. I'm I'm going to go with go with Auburn, just like we've been saying the last two weeks here. Auburn is just they they are just a team that is it is it is just the like the writing is already on the wall. The paint just has to dry. La la la. I think they are just that they they are on a they they are on a tear. And uh, you know, just just beating those three big teams that 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 we talked about earlier, the Kansas, North North Carolina, and and Kentucky is just uh, faith is on their side. Like I like I want to say, and uh, yeah. and uh, I, I, I think, I mean, like what? First of all, what better storyline is it that two teams that never made it to 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 the Final Four? makes it to the championship um like that that right there is just a very magical yeah. moment there chris, yeah the, and, and the texas tech coach that's a great story chris beard yeah coming from where he's come from and his coaching ranks and all that mm-hmm. and bruce pearl longtime coach at milwaukee and tennessee and especially tennessee you know going to auburn um and creating a um putting his system there in auburn changing the culture a little bit um he said he got to Auburn. He said he didn't see any statues of Charles Barkley. He said, I need pictures and statues of <laughs> Charles Barkley so I can show these recruits Barkley played here. Right. You know, Chuck Person played here. Chris Morris, who was a lottery pick, played here. The late, great Mike Mitchell from San Antonio played at Auburn and was great in the NBA. He said he needs more pictures of those guys. Wesley Person played in the NBA. Wesley Person, Chuck Person's uh, little brother. There's some great NBA players that played at Auburn, and he wanted – the kids, the recruits to see these, hey, look, you get here, you go to school, do your homework, yeah, absolutely, but you can also make it to the NBA. And he didn't see that at Auburn. He's changing the culture there a little bit at Auburn. And so that would be a, a, a big feather in his cap to uh, win a championship there. That would be unbelievable uh, for Coach Bruce Pearl, and I like him. I like the guy. The fact that he's here is a good feather in his cap. i tell you what NBA scouts want to see, though. I got the Texas Tech-Auburn matchup. The Texas Tech-Virginia matchup is probably – what NBA scouts want to see, because then you'd have the ultimate matchup of six foot six uh, Jarrett Kohler versus six seven DeAndre Hunter um, uh, going at each other in the in the final there uh, on Monday night. Can DeAndre Hunter guard Jarrett <laughs> Kohler? You know that that because they're going to guard each other in the at the NBA level. They'll both probably be in the rookie game, right? Because uh, they're both going to be lottery picks, so they'll both probably be in the rookie game in the NBA. And that'd be a great matchup to see those two guys go at. They're similar in size. DeAndre Hunter's probably a, a little stronger than Culver. Um, but, yeah, that would be a great matchup just to see those two go at it alone. But, you know, I have Auburn and Texas Tech. You have the same thing. So we probably, in our opinion, we won't see that matchup. But that would be a fun matchup to see. Yeah, uh, that would definitely be the lowest scoring NCAA tournament <laughs> yeah. game ever. Like the final score, 35-37. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, we're not exaggerating. It sounds like we might be exaggerating, but if you watch Michigan, Texas Tech, Michigan couldn't even get to 30. Like, it was crazy for right. the for the longest time. Mm-hmm. And you was just like, oh, my God. Texas well, they had Tech, 19 and a half, I, like, I, like, I think it was, 19 points at halftime. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's but, crazy. But, but, yeah, so, guys, that, that that is our final four picks. Uh on uh friday april 5th here obviously when monday show rolls around hopefully we're right hopefully we're right the freak <laughs> over there but if we're not we will re wait we're definitely going to talk about the championship ship yeah. ship ship game guys don't don't get it twisted uh even if it is, even if it is michigan state and Vir- and like and virginia I think it's going to be a good game either way no yeah. matter n- no matter how the games fall out what there's six possibilities that, that can happen or, or some or something like that. I think yeah. any possibility that we get is going to have a great game. But on the next side of the break, we've been in the amateur league for quite a while here. Let's jump up to the association. Uh, so we'll like, we're going to talk a little bit NBA draft next guys. So come back with us and uh, we'll be back in a minute.
All right, guys, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. I am Michael Buckeister, uh, and this is RTF Sports Talk here. Guys, thank you for spending some time with us here this afternoon. If you are new and listening to us on iHeartRadio, uh, Spotify, Google Podcasts, etc., considering following us uh, on those uh, respective platforms, leave us a ranking as well, like as well. Uh, I was just on our iTunes link last night. We are we we do have a five star rating, guys. So <laughs> check us out, even though it is two rankings. But you know, hey, it is what it is. We got a couple rankings in there. If you're listening to us on uh, YouTube Live here, we are live on the YouTube channels Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday at 1:45 Eastern Time. That's 12:45 Central, uh, give or take a few minutes, just depending on how traffic is. Uh, because we have a long way to go to from our beds to our chairs. So sometimes traffic's a little crazy over there. Uh, if you are on YouTube, consider subscribing as well. Like, comment, and uh, share all the possible things that we have here. But Marcus, we've been talking amateur basketball for a little while. And uh, not very much long, these amateurs are going to go and make some millions and millions of dollars. Uh, I mean, some notable people that have declared for the NBA draft. Uh, ja Morant d- declared yesterday. Uh, 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 there's been some other notable names. Uh, I We are anticipating Zion to declare for the draft. Uh, Barrett, uh, P.J. Washington from Kentucky. Um, like We are not going to go for the full two rounds of the draft, but in your opinion right now, if everybody were to declare for the draft that they were, uh, that we all anticipate them to, who is your top five picks? Who who are your top five players uh, coming out of college and going to the NBA next year? Well, look, Zion Williamson is the clear number one pick. I, I mean, don't, I don't know about clear top, here, but I'll let you there, go. Well, there, go I don't I don't think there's uh, there's any more clear pick um, that's been in a while. I mean, he is the the real deal, the the, the, the raw talent that everybody um, craves. I mean, th- this guy's the real deal. He can play the four or the five in the NBA. He can play small ball five. Um, he can play the power forward at four. He just has to develop a, a, a – if he wants to last long in the league, he's going to have to develop a better jump shot, and he's going to have to get his skill set in order to be a playmaking, and maybe he can even move to the three position. But right now in the NBA, he's a four or five, and he, he will dom- He will be one of those 16 points, 10 rebounds, and three blocks player right off the bat. 16 points, 10 rebounds, and three blocks a night, 32 minutes – and he can play the four or the five. He's he's the number one overall pick. The only way that he's not the number one overall pick is if the Phoenix Suns somehow grab the number one pick. And I think they would have to take a long look at John Morant to go with Devin Booker and be a backcourt there for many years to come. Uh, if John Morant develops a jump shot, like an Isaiah Thomas type jump shot, uh, John Morant will be an NBA All-Star every year he's in the league or every year after his rookie year. I could, I could see a situation where John Morant in 10 years – um, is still an NBA All Star, and Zion Williamson has faded away because his athleticism has waned, and he didn't develop a, a, a skill set to be, to be the three. So that's also a possibility because when your athleticism goes at 280 pounds, he's gonna Zion Williamson is gonna have to develop a skill set to let to when he's 30 years old to be relevant. He can't just rely on jumping and and leaping ability for so long. Um, John Morant would then be the better pick. Because 10 years from now, John Morant will still be shooting jumpers and getting people in, in pick and roll situations and kicking butt. So Phoenix Suns, if they had the number one pick, I think they would debate it, John Morant or Zion Williamson. But other than that, if anybody else gets that number one pick, they're probably going to take Zion Williamson. Um, number three, that, that that's a tough one because I'm a little down on R.J. Barrett. I guess he's still your number three overall pick. I think there's a big there, – there is a gap between one and two. And I think the draft starts at the third, third third spot. I think it's clearly the number one and number two picks in the draft are Zion Williamson and John Morant. After that, the third pick, it's 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 a drop off. It's a tiny it's a it's a drop off. It's a tiny drop off, but it's a drop off. So you, you know you look at uh, uh, Achachimura from Gonzaga, um, you know R.J. Barrett, you know DeAndre Hunter, you know he could he's a hell of a defender, and and if DeAndre Hunter's shooting the basketball well and he can play defense like that. Um, he can be right there. Uh, Jarrett Culver, we talked about, and DeAndre Hunter. Uh, Cameron Reddish from Duke, he fell off. He used to be the back before in some early mock drafts, and, and including my mock draft, he used to be right there at three or four. He's now, I, you know, I think I got him around 10. Um, he's got to get a better feel for the game. I'm talking about Cameron Reddish from Duke. He's got to get a better feel for the game. He can shoot the ball, but um, you know, he's he, his, his NCAA tournament run wasn't good, and it didn't look good, and he's dropped off a little bit. 
a like you mentioned that he's still going to be a millionaire, <laughs> but yeah. uh, you know he's he's fallen off a little bit. So I guess R.J. Barrett, uh, uh, Hachimura, Kobe White, we talked about him yesterday. DeAndre Hunter, all these guys are are really good. Um, I tell you what, even Bol Bol, Manu Bol's son, I think could creep into the lottery after some some pre draft work workouts. So right there is is are, are your top players for the NBA draft? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and uh, I I hear everything you are saying, but I, I want to start right there at the top uh, at the Zion and and the Jaw talk here. Um, like you are definitely spot spot on there. I think if the Phoenix Suns do get that first all, first overall pick, they will definitely take Jaw Morant. Um, uh, I think they just they they need something to spark this young core that they have. They trusted the process as 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 Philly likes to say for a very very long time here and uh it's just it's 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 something said that you know just, just a high flyer, a person that can play anywhere. Um good the one upside that John Morant has is he can be a point guard. He can be a shooting guard. He can he can even be a small 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 forward if he if he needs, if he needs to be the like the only knock that I have on Jaw right now is is he is he blossomed on a team that is not a big name team, uh, you know like his to be honest his like his his competition was kind of superior like all like all year you know playing I I saw him play uh, versus Evansville um, to be honest I think my local high school team could have beat Evansville and. Evansville gave them a good run, uh, so. No, I, I get you that. That's funny. Yeah, no, I know. I yeah, he the competition he played wasn't great, but then that kind of put a little bit of dismissal to that Michael when they went up against Marquette and then John Morant dominated Marquette as well. So yeah, he showed that you know he could do it against big boy competition. But you're right. Before we before the Marquette game, we didn't see it. Well, so if yeah. you if you want to talk about them a little bit, I think. Marquette's kind of in the same kind of in the same boat. Who do they play like all year? Yeah, they they played Kansas State earlier in the year when they were down. I think we had four hurt players like in that game, and I think Marquette jumped as high as 16 seed. Uh, sorry, the 16th ranking during that little time 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 stretch from December to late early February there, and uh, then they kind of. Fell off and kind of sneaked into the to tournament, uh, so uh, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't even say mm, they were a you know a big mar like a big competition team. Uh, They're coming from the Big East, and uh, they didn't really have a lot of competition this year outside of Villa Villanova. Um, but then you get to Zion here. Um, it, like it, like it, like it, like it all depends what team gets him. Um, or sorry, what team gets the first overall pick? Uh, let's let's say the first overall pick is the Knicks. I think Knicks scoop him up instantly because they need a big man to help Knox. Uh, Knox is the is the he's like he's been kind of playing this power forward spot here, and like he doesn't like playing power forward he wants to be outside he 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 uh he uh, wants to be that uh that small forward that that three like that three guy that sits out on the wing shoots it from from the outside and uh, you know drives when he wants to drive uh he he doesn't want to get down in the post and bang with the with like the big the big bodies at it like 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 at all um i i i so right right now i think i have number one jaw morant um I think he will be the must see TV in the NBA to start out, but he is a uh, he will be must see TV for the first few months. Then people start to figure him out. He tinkers off it's just, just just a tad bit, but I think he is the ticket seller because pe- people want to see big dunks. They they want to see 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 him shoot, steal, etc. Yeah, I have him number one, Zion two, Barrett number three. Uh, you know that's kind of tough because R.J. Barrett did kind of fade away in the tournament just a tad, a like a tad bit. Uh, there are times when you're like, "Where did R.J. go? Well, why is he shooting?" You know that kind of thing. Uh, the and then number four, I have Romeo Langford from Indiana. 
uh, Romeo is a local product here. I've seen him play many, many games in. And, and he just declared, right? Yeah, he declared. Uh, yeah. We were actually at dinner last night at my brother-in-law's house, and we got a uh, and we got a, a thing on our phone that said he has declared forward for for the draft. Um, he is a very he is a very he is going to be a great pro. He like he like he may not wow you in his like in the stat sheet like like every night, but he is going to keep his nose clean. He is going to you know score you your 15, 16 points a night, get you eight or nine boards and he is he's an ultimate team player so he will fit on any system if you need him to play the four he'll play the four if you need him to play 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 the two he'll play the two he is just like he wants to play he wants to be great so that so like that's why i have him as number no, number four and and then number five i got the guy from lsu reed um the the freshman he just declared uh yesterday yeah. as well uh i think he is going to be a very good prospect as well on that um i'm not for sure how his game will e- transfer to the nba game but I, I definitely think he is going to be a really good pro in year two three four five no i love i i love uh nas reed from from lsu he, he's a grown man at 19 have you ever seen a more grown man than nas reed i no. mean the guy's 19 yeah. years old i showed him <laughs> i showed him to my son uh, six foot ten LSU Nasri, and I said, the guy looks like he's thirty years old. Right, the guy looks like he has four kids, and um, <laughs> he's already in the NBA. Um, that guy is 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 a monster. And what I love about him is he can hit threes, he can control the paint, and he can hit threes. So I mean, you're talking about a guy that can play a multiple positions. He, uh, he can play any. He can play the three, four, or the five in the NBA. He can't play the one or the two. Although the NBA basketball has come up, become a little bit positionless. You know, you just put your best five out there on some nights. Right. But uh, yeah, Reed's a monster. I like. I love your pick with Reed. Um, I've, I've seen most mock drafts. I have him right around the lottery, like around that ten, the, the backside of the lottery, around ten to fourteen. Um, but hey, if you want to put, if you, you, I would have no problem if you had the fifth pick overall and you were the Atlanta Hawks and you wanted to take Nas Reed. I wouldn't come in and say, "What are you doing?" That guy's a heck of a player. He's a heck of a talent. I mean, bottom line on this draft. I think we both agree there's two transcendent talents, though, in this draft. There's Zion Williamson and John Morant, I'm t- and I'm talking about athletic-wise. Yeah. I'm not talking about they're going to be Larry Bird and Tim Duncan, you know. No. But I'm talking about freaky athleticism. They're one and two, and then there's a little drop-off of three. I think the draft starts at the third pick, um, which is Cleveland, because John Morant and Zion Williamson are going to go one, two, regardless of what happens. So yeah. the third pick right now, it's Cleveland. We don't know how the lottery is going to go. But if the lottery went the way it's supposed to go with the ping pong balls, Cleveland Cavaliers would have the third pick. And I think that's where the draft starts. We know Zion's one or, or uh, um, John Morant's two. OK, yeah. And so and also I really the Knicks right now are supposed to get the number one pick. I would love for the Knicks to, to have the number one pick. I mean, the Knicks have been irrelevant for many years. I would love for them to get Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, have Knox, get Zion Williamson. And they're going to be at the they're going to they're going to be at the top three top four team in the Eastern Conference easily if they get those players they'll have a chance to win it all maybe yeah. um, that's going to be a heck of a thing for the Knicks to pick up Zion Williamson to go along with your Kevin Knox um, to play the three and the four position because you got DeAndre Jordan at the five and so that's a I tell you what, that's a great starting five for the Knicks. DeAndre Jordan at the five, Zion at the right. four, Knox at the three. I put Kevin Durant because of his handle at the two, and Kyrie Irving at the one. That is a great starting five. Even if they don't start the game, those five will finish the game. Right, and and uh, I have to agree with you. Like I think Zion is a one or two pick. No, no, no matter what, the wild card is is if there's a overseas player that we know nothing about like it like it seems like every year <laughs> yeah. one of those european players jump up in the top yeah. five and you're like who is that guy and yeah. he's and he's a freaking all like a freaking all-star uh yeah. so so uh that is the only wild card if 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 there is somebody in that draft uh, they might go two, and Ja Morant might drop down to three. Zion doesn't drop out of the one or two spots, but Ja no. Morant might, uh, simply because uh, just uh, the overseas player. And, and I think people are fascinated by by Zion, and you know he is just a once in a lifetime opportunity talent. Um, even though it, he may only be that way for five or six years, but. You've you've had him for five or six six years. Yeah, 
Absolutely. Like, let's just say Cleveland ends up with the number two pick. Right. Cleveland has Colin Sexton, so they're probably not going to take John Moran. I still would. I don't give a damn. I'll take. I'll yeah. have Colin Sexton and John Moran at the one and the two. I don't. I mean, they'll, they're both. I'd have John Moran as my combo guard at the two. He's like you said, he can play in multiple positions. John Moran's about six three and a half. I, I yeah, John Moran would be my number two pick. I don't. I don't care what what player I have. Zion goes one. Uh, and I have the number two pick. I don't care who I have. I don't care if I had Michael Jordan. I don't care if I had uh, John Stockton at the point guard. Right. You're take, I'm, take, I'm not passing up on a talent like John Morant, freakish talent like that that can put 30 a night on you some nights. Um, he would play my two guard then. Yeah. yeah so me, me, like I have I, John Morant going number two. He doesn't slip past number two. I mean, like I, 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 like I almost feel like this is the this, this is the can't miss draft in the one and two picks. Like honestly, one and two picks you uh, can't. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it, it, if you mess this up, let's just say Cleveland gets the first overall pick, and they're like, well, like I like Love. Like I don't want you know Zion to take away from Love. Uh, I, I, I like I got. Uh, I, 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 I don't even know the players on the Cavs like right right now. L- <laughs> let's just say they they uh, take that English or that or that European guy like overseas that first overall pick. Right. I wish nothing but bad luck for the Cavs. Like yeah. at that point. <laughs> they, there, yeah. There's no way they can screw that up. I mean, wouldn't that be I, a I Cleveland remember, I, thing though? Like, hey, yeah. we're, like we're going to pass on these two for sure things and go with somebody that we don't know about from like that would that would that would be the ultimate cleveland thing like <laughs> the last time it, it, that happened um and it wasn't an overseas player but my son and i were watching the draft and I, we were like um so the portland trailblazers had lamarcus aldridge and so kevin it was the kevin durant greg odin draft right and so me my son and i were like there's no way you take kevin durant you pair him with LaMarcus Aldridge, <laughs> and I think they have Brandon Roy. Are you talking about a monster? They wouldn't even – they would score 120 in, the, in your sleep. I said, you do not pass up on Kevin Durant if you're Portland. You pair him with LaMarcus Aldridge. That is an unbelievable power forward and small forward combination. And what they do? They took Odin. Well, well I mean, so then, like, yeah, uh, then, yeah. Odin was a beast, though, I mean, at He was a beast, I, but Durant's State. a transcendent talent. Yeah. Uh, but, you guys, that is our draft for right now. On the other side of the break here, we are going to talk playoffs. Playoffs? Yeah, we're going to talk playoffs. Playoffs is about a week away, maybe a week and a half. I'm not for sure when exactly the start day is. About four games left in the NBA season. Uh, so we're going to talk Western Conference first. So come back and join us. Sure. All right, guys, welcome back to RTF Sports Talk. I am Michael Buckheister. And uh, if you are new here, uh, consider subscribing. Definitely hit that like button if you're watching us on YouTube Live. That would be very much appreciated. If you're listening to us on iHeartRadio, Spotify, iTunes, anywhere you get your podcasts, uh, be sure to rank that if you would, please. Uh, I mean, it would be very much appreciated if you guys would give us a little ranking. Uh, also consider subscribing to that as well. Uh, once you hit that subscribe button, get automatic downloads. And you get to hear our beautiful voices uh, Monday, Tuesday, Thursdays, and Fridays uh, each week. So, Marcus, it is playoff time uh, for you guys that are, are on the Twitter world here. At Marcus the Freak is where you guys can find Marcus. You, you can find myself at mbuck forty one. All the information is in the description below, guys. Uh, so definitely consider following us on that. But Marcus, playoffs are, you know, like like I said, they are right around the corner. Um, what was it? Tuesday we talked Eastern Conference Finals. Since then, there has been a shakeup. Now the Miami Heat is out. Orlando Magic is in the playoffs. So we might have to go back to the East and talk about, uh, like, a, like a little bit of East. But let's talk about the West. West matchups are uh, looking like um, pretty must-see TV here. 
So just give me your thoughts on the West right now. I, I, I think we're all kind of in agreement that Golden State is going to come out of the West. But what kind of road are they going to get there? Are they going to have a tough road? Are we going to have an easy road? Does anybody want to play Golden State in the playoffs? Let me have it, man. Yeah, no, it's Golden State's playoffs to win, especially in the Western Conference Finals. Um, I think Golden State's going to struggle a little bit when they wherever they play coming out the East. But like you mentioned the other day, the Eastern Conference, they're probably going to beat each other up pretty good, especially in that second round. And then, and then those Eastern Conference Finals, and by the time they get to the Warriors, they're going to be worn out, and the Warriors are probably going to beat the team from the East um, pretty handily. But I still think the East can give the Warriors – uh, some some difficulties there, especially if it's Toronto. But um, it's the Warriors to lose in the Western Conference. I mean, there there's no way anybody's going to beat them. I mean, they're they're just too talented. I, I tell you what, though, just from a Golden State Warriors perspective, they want San Antonio in that first round. San Antonio would be much, even though San Antonio's hard nosed. They play the right way. Um, they don't make many mistakes. They make you beat them. That's all fine, well and dandy. But um, they'd rather play San Antonio than Oklahoma City Thunder who would give them more of a nightmare in terms of athletic-wise, driving to the basket, um, Paul George putting pressure on Draymond Green. They Golden State would actually have to sweat <laughs> if they played Oklahoma State in the first round. They wouldn't break too much of a sweat playing my San Antonio Spurs. Spurs might get one game. Uh, Oklahoma City could push them to seven games. Right. So Golden State really wants San Antonio in that first round. Portland, Utah is slated for that 4-5 matchup. Portland, to their credit, has won a few games, even though Nurkic and uh, C.J. McCollum hasn't been there. That's been very surprising. It's a little bit akin to that Indiana. Your Indiana Pacers are still winning without Oladipo. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's surprising as well. But I don't think – but the playoffs are a different animal. You can get by and win some regular season games. Can Indiana survive without Oladipo in the playoffs? That remains to be seen. Can Portland survive without Nurkic in the playoffs? That remains to be seen. Um, I don't think they do that. I think Utah, even as a fifth seed, will take one in Portland and then come back and win this thing in six. I have Utah. Utah would beat Portland right now without Nurkic. Um, Houston Clippers right now, uh, that would be a, the 3-6 matchup. If Houston has all their players, Capella and Chris Paul's right and everything, uh, Clippers, they're not going to beat. They're not going to make any noise in the playoffs. Houston should get rid of them uh, pretty well. I, although I do think, you know, Doc Rivers, to his credit, he's keeping his team afloat. They're doing well. They're playing the right way. Clippers remind me of like an Olympic team where they don't have a superstar, even though Lou Williams gets 25 points a night. They don't have this true superstar where everything's on his shoulders. They play the right way with Gallinari and those boys. They have a a, a defensive stopper as well. Um, they're pretty good. The Clippers are playing really good. Everybody knows their roles. They're, Doc Rivers gets a lot of credit. Should get a lot of credit for that, keeping the Clippers afloat. But they're no match for Houston. They might get a game from Houston, but Houston will advance. And that Denver OKC matchup, that two seven matchup, is very intriguing. I love the Denver Nuggets, but man, if if uh, if, if they get OKC in that seven matchup, that's going to be tough. OKC is going to push Denver or Golden State. Right. And I tell you right now, if it's San Antonio, Denver, San Antonio will push Denver to the to their uh, maximum level. I love Denver, but they don't have – their second unit to me is suspect um, with Beasley and Plum Plumley and Morris. Uh, those names are not household names. I think everybody remembers Plumley more for playing at Duke or you know playing in college than they would uh, yep. uh, playing in the NBA. And, and, and who knows who, who – how many fans out there know who Be Beasley and Morris are, the second unit for Denver Nuggets? You know what I mean? So they, they're going to struggle, I think. Denver Nuggets are going to struggle with depth. Um, they have a really good starting five. But I think OKC could beat Denver. That's a tough one. I, that's the only one I wouldn't predict right at this moment. I'd have to wait to see how things shake out because um, it could be San Antonio versus Denver. It could be OKC versus Denver. But either one, San Antonio or OKC, is going to push Denver at that second and the, when the second meets the seventh uh, seed matchup. Yeah, uh, I like all your picks. Uh, uh, f like uh, I will pick the higher seeds all the way out in the first 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 round here so as the western conference stands right out, right now with eight days till playoffs you have golden state spurs in that one eight seed you have uh trailblazer jazz in that four or five seed uh houston clippers three six seed and nuggets versus okc so i'm i'm i would have the warriors advancing versus spurs i got portland advancing versus the jazz houston advancing versus the clippers and thunder 
advancing versus the Nuggets, uh, giving us a Warriors Trailblazers matchup, uh, Houston OKC matchup, which that would be a very very good matchup. I would wow, that that, that, that would that, that that's must see TV. TV. Yeah, Houston OKC would be must see TV. Yeah. Uh, so I, I didn't write down who you had in that Portland series. Did you? Utah. Have the, uh, I get you. Okay. Utah. I think the Nurkic thing. Um, We'll come back to bite them that one. They needed Nurkic um, to advance. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, Nurkic. And then McCollum's going to come back, and McCollum's not going to be – you need a little bit of rhythm. Um, he's going to come back, and he's going to try to get in rhythm in the playoffs, and that's not going to work. Um, so I, Utah's – Rudy Gobert's going to dominate in the inside without Nurkic. Yeah, there's – Utah's advancing. Okay, uh, so – we will go with your pick there. You have the uh, Warriors versus Jazz, uh, Houston versus. Did, did you have? You, the, and you had the Nuggets versus Houston, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. You know what? I'll, I'll reserve judgment because I really that's seven eight. It's up in the air. I think OKC or the Spurs are going to beat um, Denver, just like you said. That doesn't mean Denver's a, a bad team. They're just too young and and their depth is in question yeah i mean denver can shoot lights out if you you have a game where nurkic is going and jamal murray shooting the ball well gary harris and will barton those guys can shoot lights out i just don't think they can shoot lights out for four games and they need to shoot lights out for four games to win a seven game series so uh i i have okc advancing over denver um if, if it was the if they were the seven seed and then playing houston yeah absolutely then i would have um Golly, that's a heck of a matchup, Houston OKC. I don't know who. Now, here's the thing. If Chris Paul's hobbling and he's on a minute restriction or he misses the first two games of the OKC series, OKC will beat them. Yep. Because, yeah, because it, that Harden stuff that works in the regular season, by the time you get to the second round or the Western Conference Finals, Harden's wore out. They take the ball out of your hands. Mm-hmm. They trap them on the pick and rolls. And you're going to have – they're going to say, hey, P.J. Tucker beat us. <laughs> yeah, so, and that's and, not going to happen. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and, and they well, last year, you see what Golden State did to the Houston Rockets. They said Trevor Ariza beat us, and guess what happened? Trezor, Trevor Ariza went 0 for 12. Yeah, exactly. From the, from the, yeah, so that that Harden stuff doesn't work in the playoffs. It might work in the first round um, versus the Clippers, although Doc Rivers is going to have something to say about that. But it definitely – Carden will fade away by the time he faces the Warriors uh, in the Western Conference at, at finals, and he might even fade away – uh, defensive wise, as soon as Oklahoma City gets a hold to him, yeah, and that that and that has been the knock on Houston for a couple years now. They are a great regular season team, but once the playoffs come, they're not a very good playoff team. They are not yeah. built to win a championship. They are built to win a lot of games in the regular season, but after that, they are just built to like hopefully we get a good match matchup and a other team just 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 plays bad. Basically, kind of yeah. What, I mean, what it feels like two two years ago, Harden wore out. Uh, against the Spurs, mm-hmm. um, and the Spurs didn't even have Kawhi Leonard, and so here's Harden's chance to beat the Spurs to get to the Western Conference Finals, and he couldn't get by Ginobili, a 38 year old Ginobili. Think right. about that for a second. Yeah. yeah, and then the year before, I think Harden flamed out against the Clippers. Yeah, so yeah, definitely right. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So uh, at that, uh, 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 like, as it stands at the current top of of like of that Western Conference bracket, I think Golden State skates to the final pretty easily um now this houston okc man matchup like 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 just just like we've been saying this is a very very intriguing matchup i got oklahoma city beating houston setting up a golden state houston f- f- final like that would be huge i think to have a seven well, i'm, right, I'm yeah. right there with you i think it's going to be houston golden state but that's only predicated on if chris paul is not hurt right how many times have we watched in the playoffs <clears throat> Uh, the past few years with Chris Paul, he goes to the sideline and they they're they're wrapping his knee. Yeah, you know, and then he's on a limb minutes restriction. And then oh, he's not available for Game Four. <laughs> well, then he's not. Then OKC will beat Houston. But if Chris Paul's playing like Chris Paul, he takes a lot of pressure off Harden. You can't trap and you can't trap both of them. And so that Chris Paul's the key to winning. Harden's going to be hard and he'll get his. But Chris Paul's the key to winning, uh, and beating OKC and beating the Clippers. If he's available. And uh, he can play, and he's not on a minute restriction, and he's available for every game. Houston's a tough out. They're probably the second best team to Golden State if Chris Paul's fully healthy. So you would have Houston beating OKC. Yes, if Chris Paul's healthy. Yes, if not, no OKC winning. And I think OKC beats them either way. I think OKC is is kind of like this Auburn team. Like they are kind of like 
if they get this seven seed, they kind of have the road already paid for them. They just got to start the car and just drive. Uh, yep. Like, I think everything kind of matches up pretty good for them. And let's say Chris Paul is not right. The, the, the Do not be surprised if the Clippers nip them in the butt and knock them out. And then that that just, would be hilarious. Yeah, and then and then that just makes OKC ride to the uh, Western Conference Final that much easier. It absolutely, because would. They, they 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 would destroy the Clippers. Like they I, would. I think it would be a it'd four be, game. Sweep. Yeah, it'd be OKC in five. Yeah, and uh, and I think this is the only way that the Eastern Conference would have a chance to beat Golden State is if it was an Oklahoma City Golden State Finals because I think that game would go seven games. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, so like the Warriors are probably going to sweep the Spurs. Uh, they'll probably have, I want to say six <laughs> games versus the Jazz. Uh, okay. Um, probably a very very big stretch there, more than likely five. But let's just say they play six, and then mm-hmm. they play a seven game series versus Oklahoma. I mean, that's quite a that that's a quite a lot of games. And yeah. And uh, less and then like let's say Toronto makes it to the finals just like you've been saying on Tuesday's show I uh, mean, mean that might be a subject that 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 would definitely be a opportunity to get Golden State knocked off their like their throne See, just like you said the Warriors would have a tough time in the Western Conference Finals versus OKC and they probably would beat OKC that just made my point of the Warriors want no part of OKC in the first round yeah they don't they want to see the Spurs because that would be a tough first round for them already Right off the bat, they don't they don't want any part of that. Toronto, uh, I have Toronto coming out of the East playing the Warriors, and Toronto is like you know we were just talking about the Final Four matchups here. Toronto's like that Texas Tech defense; they suffocate you, mm-hmm. and so they would be Golden State Warriors' toughest matchup in the finals. When you got a Kawhi Leonard and Danny Green playing defense, and an OG and a and a Pascal Siakam and Ibaka, those guys aren't going to let. Uh, a Golden State breed. I mean, Golden State's going to probably win the series, but they'll have to do it shooting fadeaway shots and contested three-pointers. It will be the one of the most difficult series Golden State's ever played. It'll kind of feel like the LeBron James Cleveland Cavaliers of 2016 um, playing Toronto, and you just substitute Kawhi Leonard for LeBron James. Right. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, I definitely hear everything you're like, like you're saying. Uh, but I think we both agree. I think the nation agrees. Golden State will be coming out of the Western Conference, yes. Uh, no matter who they play. Now the Eastern Conference here, nothing has I mean like the top. I believe the top five seeds have been set. Uh, you really can't change those all like all that much. But the bottom three seeds. Uh, Everybody has an opportunity. Uh, the but currently, right now, you have the or, the Orlando Magic at the eight seed, Brooklyn Nets at the seven seed, and the Pistons at the six seed. Do you think these three teams make the playoffs, or do you see the Heat jumping in there? Or uh, who's? I think there's another team that's actually has an opportunity as like as well to jump yeah. up and like like up like like up uh, like up up in there. Uh, who who are your final three seeds? Yeah, in the, Charlotte like in has an outside chance, but no, I don't think Charlotte's even going to get in there. So it's yeah. between the the Heat and Orlando. Um, you know it, that can go either way. I don't even think it matters that much. I think Milwaukee's going to destroy whoever comes in. But I tell you what, Orlando is intriguing. At Vucevic and, and and Gordon, those boys can fly. I mean, those guys are good in the post. Um, they can also hit threes. They're really athletic. Um, I yeah, I mean. They probably would give Milwaukee probably a little better run maybe than Miami. Uh, I don't know. I just saw Miami beat my Spurs a couple weeks ago. Miami looked good doing it. So, But I, I don't think that either one that will give Milwaukee too much of a challenge. Um, the interesting one for me is Detroit could give Philly a little bit of run. When you have Drummond and Blake Griffin and you got Reggie Jackson bombing from the outside, those, those guys are a lot to handle. Drummond is going to grab 20 rebounds every game, yeah. and Blake Griffin's tough to handle. I still think Philly will beat Detroit, but that's gonna that one could go a little bit of the distance there. But, um, yeah, I, I think we talked about that a couple days ago, and I think uh, the world would agree with us. And I think, yeah, Milwaukee, Boston, Philly, and Toronto, the top four teams in the East, are, go- are going to be playing each other in the second round. And that second round is as much CTV as – Oklahoma City versus Warriors. Yeah, I mean that is that second round of the Eastern Conference is brutal. 
Yeah, the the only thing I would uh, I would say against that, like your picks in that first in that first round, there is is the Pistons are a pretty good team. Uh, I watched them play the Pacers uh, Monday night. Yeah, they lost by 15, 16 points, but it was a the score did not re, re, reflect the game. I felt I felt I kind of felt like the Pistons were resting a lot of other players because they are they are pretty much locked in that like in that sixth seed. Uh, they definitely cannot make up a nine game spread uh, with with like four games left to jump into the fifth seed, and then the uh, the like the only thing they can do is drop down to the seventh seed, um, and thinking about it i think the pistons would match up better against toronto than they do against philly uh philly just they 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 have an inside outside game that i i like the like the like the pistons cannot guard that outside game uh they have a pretty good in they pretty they, they have a pretty good in interior with blake and drummond but their outside game they're like they're point guard play is pretty down uh i don't trust their point guard play uh but if the playoffs were to start today i would have to pick uh, i i would have to take all of your picks as well but i would definitely be circling that pistons sixers series and then the indiana boston series i think that is going to go seven games for sure the indiana boston series um just because i i, I don't know it, it like it's like it's like it's just a feeling that i have that that Indiana has that destiny, like we've been saying all show, to make a to make a run uh, in the playoffs and push the Bucks. But I'm I'm I'll definitely have to go with the top four seeds uh, moving forward. So that would give us a Milwaukee Boston matchup and then a Philly Toronto matchup. I know who you have in that bottom series. You definitely have Toronto because you have them going to the finals. But that Boston Bucks series. What are your thoughts on that one? Oh yeah, the the, the Celtics Bucks that that's an amazing matchup. I, I can't. I, I mean, you you talk about two great coaches, Brad Stevens versus Coach Mike Budenholzer. Um, that thing is must see TV. We the second round of the Eastern Conference. Uh, if Brogdon comes back healthy, he's an on the ball defender that'll get in your butt. I mean, he's a heck of a player. That's going to be nice to see him at six foot three challenge Kyrie at six foot three. Brogdon is a hell of a defender, and if they can get him back healthy, they get Miritich back healthy. You got to surround the Greek freak with shooters, Miritich and Middleton. You know, Boston is a Boston's depth will is amazing. Uh, the problem with Boston all year is they could they aren't they're not they have too many good players. That's yeah. that's that you just can't do it. There, there's not enough basketballs. How how are these guys going to develop? Um, how is Jalen Brown going to develop? You know, how are the, you know how is how is Rozier? going to develop he's he, they don't get much time and so the boston this is their last go at it they're going to lose a couple of these players tatum uh, they're probably they're going to keep tatum with jalen brown rogier these guys are going to have to go be Kyrie goes um there's not enough basketballs there at the with the celtics so this is their last run at it but they're gonna, probably going to make some noise here because their depth is really really going to be really really good here in the playoffs and that that's what you need uh, to survive this uh, this marathon here in the playoffs um but yeah i mean i still see milwaukee winning the the greek freak is unbelievable an unbelievable talent i i can't wait to see how he does in these big moments when he has to hit a 20 footer or he has to make these decisions because brad stevens is going to uh, play that really good defense, uh, Celtic defense against the Greek Freak, and I can't see how the Greek. I can't wait to see how the Greek Freak responds to Brad Stevens' defense. I, I, I'm I'm waiting. I'm anticipating that, but I I just think Milwaukee and Coach Bud and the shooters they made some great trades around the deadline mm-hmm. to get the right people in. I I, I like Bledsoe uh, from Kentucky, Brogdon. I mean these guys and Coach Budenholzer's system. Getting Miritich was huge. It's huge. It, it's almost like they got Miritich to go. Okay, you got you got Tatum, uh, you got Jalen Brown, you got these shooters, you got uh, 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 Jason Hayward. We're bringing in Miritich mm-hmm. with Middleton, so we're just going to have an outside shooting contest. That's going to be fun, and I think the Greek Freak's going to control the paint. I think uh, uh, Al Horford's going to have a hard time guarding that monster, and I think Milwaukee survives. I think I think if they survive in seven. This is going to be a matchup for the ages. Yeah. Uh, uh... 
and I know you are high on high on Toronto, and I definitely see why. But I think the winner of the Eastern Conference comes out of that Milwaukee Boston series. That's possible. I, I think the winner of that series will that they will be skating high in into that finals, and th- that Toronto is going to be a five or six game series. I think it's going to be very very lopsided because I think Toronto is going to kind of have an easy like easy road. And they're like, oh, this is too easy, and they you know that first shell shock of two games you know they're like oh what's like what's happening uh, and i think they will recover it too late uh, and i think um uh, just i think mentally they will check out and it'll be game over so i really think the winner of that milwaukee boston series will be the representative in the eastern conference uh, the only way, the only way that i see toronto folding in this playoffs and it won't be in the first round it'll mm-hmm. be in the second round yeah is listen, Kawhi Leonard's a transcendent talent. He's too good. He can put a team on his back. You got to remember, this guy had the Warriors down 25 points in the Western Conference Finals in Game One in the middle of the third quarter. Right. Think about that for a second. He had Kevin Durant and Stephen Curry and Draymond Green and Klay Thompson down. He was dominating the game. Okay, if you see that Kawhi Leonard in the playoffs, be scared. Yeah. Okay. Definitely. The only way that I see Toronto losing in the playoffs, losing in the second round is if Kyle Lowry goes back to his 4 for 20 shooting. Yeah. Okay. If you see that Kyle Lowry 1 for 11, then Toronto's in trouble. But if Kyle Lowry plays like Kyle Lowry and steps up in the playoffs which we've hardly ever seen, Toronto will almost be unbeatable. But Kyle, so a lot of it depends on Kyle Lowry. Which which guy are you going to see? If you see the 4 for 20 Kyle Lowry, Toronto might bow out. If you see a good, efficient Kyle Lowry, then Toronto can win. Hopefully we see that Kyle Lowry in the first round versus the, the Nets and not in the second round. Because, uh, I, to be honest, I would love to see a Toronto Bucks f- final. I think that would that, yes. be a great, a great, great series. Yes. Um, we are going to take one more break, guys. Uh, we are getting a little on the uh, time crunch here. But uh, NFL power, power rankings came out. Uh, Wednesday, uh, per ESPN, uh, you know, why worldwide leader in sports. That's where we most of us get our information from. Let's be honest. Uh, but we're quickly going to kick, hit on the NFL power rankings on the other side of the break. We'll be right back, guys. Good stuff. Oh my god! I just watched Bledsoe, Eric Bledsoe, just throw the ball in and be. That's funny. Yeah, that was a really good play. I, I like actually. Uh, all right, guys, welcome back to uh, RTF Sports Talk. I am Michael Buckcatcher. Like I said, uh, if you're watching this on YouTube Live, uh, be sure to comment. You know, give us a liking and subscribe as well. If you're on iHeartRadio, Spotify, Google Podcasts, etc., uh, consider leaving, leaving us a ranking so we 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 know how we're doing out there. But Marcus, like I said earlier. On the other side of the break, the NFL power rankings did come out uh, way too early. Obviously, the draft hasn't even happened yet, so we, we don't even know what's going to happen. But uh, I, I, I want to quickly run through these power rankings, and uh, if a team really jumps out jumps out to you, like why are they up there? Uh, just, just, just say, just say some, some, something. Uh, okay. But number one, they, they, they do have the Los Angeles Rams. They went thirteen and three last year. They have my Kansas City Chiefs twelve and four last season, and then they have New Orleans Saints at number three, New England Patriots at number four, Los Angeles Chargers at number five, the Bears at number six, the Indianapolis Colts at number seven. That's kind of surprised me a like a like a little bit. Uh, mm-hmm. And so and so did this one as well. Number eight, Seattle Seahawks. Number nine, Houston Texas. Texans tens the Ravens. Eleven Steelers. Uh, surprise there. Uh, Philly at twelve. Thirteen the Dallas Cowboys. Fourteen Minnesota Vikings. Fifteen Cleveland Browns. And you had the Packers, Titans, Falcons, 
Panthers at 19, Denver Broncos at 20, Giants, uh, Miami Dolphins sitting at number 22, 49ers at 23, the Bucks, Redskins, Jacksonville Jaguars, the Detroit Lions sitting at 27, Bengals, Bills, Jets, Oakland Raiders at 31. Are they the Oakland Raiders, Las Vegas Raiders, Mexican uh, Raiders, or the Los Angeles Raiders? Nobody will ever know. I, I I even heard a rumor that they're moving to overseas in like London or, or something like that next year. Oh, my God. No <laughs> team in London. That's terrible. Yeah. And then to round out number 32, Arizona Cardinals. Obviously, this is way too early. Draft hasn't even happened yet. Offseason workouts haven't even happened yet. Uh, most of the retirements haven't even happened yet. But Marcus the Freak, any team jump 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 out at you? Like, why are they ranked that high? Or, hey, or I or, was right, or, or, or or that low? Yeah, no, I, I was agreeing with the playoff rank. Uh, excuse me, with the rankings here, the NFL rankings. Right up until you, I was with you. Right up until they got to seven, you said they said the Colts. The Colts are a really good football team. They okay? are. Okay, so I, but I, I don't know if I put them at seven. I how about you insert that, the Dallas Cowboys are too low. I mean, you, how about you, you think, insert the Cowboys at seven and then have the Colts at eight? Um, that that would probably be my rankings. I mean, the Dallas Cowboys have have, have they have they lost anybody? I mean, they were a pretty darn good football team. You add Witten to the mix, right? And then th- their weakness at safety, um, you know, was uh, you know Jeff Heath, you know. Um, so th- which, they signed George, which, which they're probably going to address in the draft. Yeah, and they signed uh, George Oilaka. Uh, from the Vikings, I don't even count Ayalaka from the Vikings because I watched him play for the Bengals for many, many years. He was really good, yeah. not not great or anything, but he's he's an upgrade from Jeff Heath. Okay, so 100%. you're going to have Georgia Ayalaka start at center with Z- um, excuse me, start at uh, safety with Xavier Woods, um, and then you have Witten coming back. If you remember the Rams Dallas game, how, we struggled on we we had that first good drive to Cooper right where they scored the touchdown, right. but then we struggled on 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 second and third downs. How would you have liked Witten to be right there? Exactly. For the safety, you know what I mean. Right. So Witten's coming back. I mean, Dallas is a pretty darn good football team. Uh, I wouldn't have them. What did you say they're at? If uh, they're out of the top ten, that list is crazy. Oh, they're thirteenth. That's that's nuts. Yeah, they're a playoff team, right? Okay, yeah. So no, absolutely not. Dallas is, Cowboys are a top ten football team. So and and the Colts are really good. I'd have, I'd, I'd flip flop. I'd have Dallas put Dallas at seven instead of the Colts and have the Colts move down one. That would be my my thing. But other than that, you're the top six teams, I think they're right on the money on those. Yeah, uh, the I feel like the top six is pretty good until you get to Chicago Bears. I I, I think they I think they had a fluke season last year. Uh, I think Mitchell Trub, Mitchell Trub, Trubisky just just played out of his mind, and I wonder if 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 he'll be able to duplicate that next season. Uh, and the Bears did just sign off their starting tailback as well. Uh, I believe. I, I, yeah, I, Howard. Why would why yeah. would they send Howard to the Eagles? That's puzzling to me. Yeah. I, I don't know uh, what that's about. So so I would drop the Bears almost out of the top ten. Uh, okay, and uh, I would in place of the Bears at the six. I do like the Seahawks. I you know they like they always seem seem to be there, but I don't think they're a top six team. I like no, Houston. That- uh, yeah, Dallas is better than Seattle. They proved that last year in the playoffs. You got to move Dallas in. There. Dallas yeah. at thirteen is crazy. Yeah, uh, maybe they're maybe they're just cowboy haters, man. Uh, yeah, to be, to be honest. Uh, but yeah, I would definitely move the Bears down, move the Colts down. Although the Colts did go nine and one in their last ten, I like I like I believe it was they started the season zero and four and and like zero and like oh like zero zero and five, but they have yeah, not. Hey, Michael. The Colts have the best offensive line, offensive line in football, just like Dallas had a couple years ago. Right. So they're a good team. I just think they're right around that eight range. De- yeah. But they eight, haven't. Eight. But they. But they haven't put any weapons around Andrew Luck. That's the only downfall of the Colts. Right. 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 Right, right, right now. Uh, and the other eye. The other eye raising. Uh, uh, team here is the Pittsburgh Steelers at number eleven. Uh, you know they don't have Bell anymore. They don't have Brown. Uh, Roethlisberger is aging. I don't think the Steelers are going to be any good this year. I think they're going to be a, a a six and a six and ten team this like this season. Uh, so I I would move them down. That's 20th. possible. Yeah, their defense to me hasn't recovered since they lost Ryan Shazier, uh-huh. their first round pick out of Ohio State to that neck injury. 
they haven't played well since he's gotten out of there. I, I, it's in spurts they might have, but overall as a defense, he, he that's like that was like the Cowboys losing Sean Lee. Yeah, you know, a, a few years back, Ryan Shazier is a big loss for Pittsburgh, and they really haven't replaced him yet. Maybe they'll do it in this draft. Uh, hopefully they because you know they like I, I would love for 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 them to bring back the Iron Curtain days uh, <laughs> back in the early '90s or whenever it was. Yeah. Uh, Cleveland Browns people are people are on this hype train. I don't think they're. I I, I think they'll be a eight a, be a eight eight and eight team. Make hmm. they will make the playoffs, but they don't know how to win yet. Uh, they need to learn how to win. Yes, make the playoffs and then build that hype train. Yes, they have Odell Beckham. They have Baker Baker. Uh, uh, that other receiver, Jar- uh, Jarvis Landry. Jarvis Landry. Yeah, uh, I mean, yeah. Uh, but their defensive side of the ball is suspect right now you know you can score i think they were ranked 30th last year yeah i mean you you can score 45 points a game awesome but if you're giving up 46 (laughs) come on now so the i I agree i agree with your eight and eight assessment i agree with your eight and eight assessment the reason i will be a little bit buyer into the buyer into the cleveland browns is they have a good quarterback i think baker mayfield's the real deal yeah uh, so he is a lightning rod he makes everybody else around him better he reminds me of brett Favre, the gunslinger and Brett Favre pretty, pre, was pretty special, even though Brett Favre threw a lot of interceptions. But Brett Favre was special. I think Baker Mayfield's in that Brett Favre mold. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, obviously these are way too early rankings. The draft isn't for another two weeks. So, like a team like the Arizona Cardinals, they could trade off their uh, number on overall pick there, get two or three first-round picks, and they could easily become a playoff team in that division that is always like every team in their division always seems seems to be right around 500 every year so if the cardinals can get to a 500 team they're a playoff team and if you're yeah yeah, go ahead we we talked about that a couple of days ago Uh, i I, we i'd keep josh rosen and i'd draft nick bosa to fit their scheme i like quinnon williams better nick bosa in the draft but for arizona's scheme i like nick bosa to play opposite chandler chandler jones there um, so I don't know. I don't know why they're doing the Kyler Murray thing. Uh, I, I, you know, it's it's for it's for the system for Cliff Kingsbury. But we were talking about three days ago. I we I wouldn't do that. I'd stick with Rosen, who I drafted uh, number ten overall two years ago. I mean, like, we will definitely dive deeper into the draft next week. But yeah. think think about this: the 49ers have the second overall pick. If the Cardinals don't draft Nick Posa, 49ers will. So you got to face him. Yep. Twice a year <laughs> for many years to come. But yeah, guys, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, so it's a catch twenty-two. Damned if you do, damned if you don't. But guys, those are the way too early power rankings. Obviously, uh, <laughs> uh, football kickoff isn't for another hundred and fifty days. Uh, draft isn't for another what twenty days. Uh, off-season workouts aren't for another forty days. So. Obviously, way too early. But, guys, as always, thank you for joining us here on RTF Sports Talk. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Follow us on iHeartRadio, iTunes. If you're on the YouTube page, there's a little link up on the description box up at the top right. It has a little Apple icon. Click on that. It'll take you directly to the iTunes link. Uh, Like I said, be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Definitely share this with a couple friends. We we like to interact with you guys on the page. Marcus, any closing thoughts before we head out, man? No, man, I'm just going to have a good time this weekend. Hey, it's championship uh, weekend. It's Final Four weekend. I'm about to go see Shazam here in a second. I'm excited about that. Actually, I, I, I'm a little <laughs> embarrassed. I'm more excited to see Shazam than my kids are. Um, this is going to be a good weekend. Shazam and Final Four. It doesn't get much better than that. So on Monday, we're going to have to get a movie review from you to to start the show. I'll put that down in my notes so I don't <laughs> forget because I think that movie is going to be a bust. Like I've seen the previews, I'm like this, 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 this. I don't know. This kind of, kind of, kind of looks weird. <laughs> hey, hey, it's already gotten good reviews though. So uh, the, the critics are, are are saying this is a pretty darn good movie. So I, I'm I'm excited to watch it. Well, we we will need a front to back movie review. No spoilers though for people that haven't seen it. But we'll definitely get your rankings. And uh, guys, we'll catch you next time. We out. All right.